So here we're going to talk about precision and accuracy in the lab. We've talked about this in class already, so you may have seen these diagrams before with the targets and the bullseyes, um, where this data over here in, in figure C is classified as accurate and precise. This is just precise and not accurate because it's not hitting the bullseye, but they're all hitting the same place. And this is neither accurate nor precise because it's not hitting the bullseye and the darts are all over the place. But let's think about this in terms of lab because we're going to be talking about precision and accuracy in lab and measuring those quantities with our data and comparing them um, to, to literature values. So in, um, in lab, precision is, of a measurement describes the repeatability of a measurement or it gives a measure of the reliability of a measurement, right? Is the measurement method reliable? Are you going to get the same answer over and over again? So we can characterize this in multiple different ways. The first way is by looking at significant figures. So your glassware that you may be um, using or any measurement device, your analytical balance or um, pressure sensors or temperature sensors will all have significant, significant figures associated with them. If we look at these um, two burettes or two pipettes or whatever graduated uh, cylinders you want to look at, this first one has more precision because it has greater repeatability because it has more significant figures. So you can see here that if I'm measuring the volume here, it's gonna be six and a half, 6.6, 6.6, maybe four, okay, 6.63. You can argue about which one that is. That last decimal place is gonna be the first uncertain digit. And all in all, this has two decimal places that goes into um, it's, it's significant figures. So this has a greater precision than this one because this burette could maybe only read to 10 and a quarter to the first decimal place, 10.2, 10.3. You can tell it's less than um, 10.5, but you can't really tell much um, else than that. So this is maybe 10.3, 10.2. Um, you can't estimate any further than that and be reliable in that estimation. And so this has one decimal place and one fewer sig fig than, than, the other, uh, than the other one. So this first um, graduated cylinder has more decimal places. It has greater precision. This uh, second one has fewer decimal places and has less precision. You can think about it in terms of these watches too. There's the Bureau of Standards of Time that keeps track of time down to the, what this is minutes or hours, minutes, seconds. And then this is tenths, uh, hundreds, thousandths of a second, right? This has very many more significant figures, eight significant figures than any watch that you might have. Um, so if you look at Jerry's analog watch versus Jennifer's digital watch, um, Jerry's watch has three significant figures. Jennifer's watch has five significant figures and therefore Jennifer's watch is more precise or more repeatable than Jerry's watch. You can also measure precision or get a measurement of the precision um, uh, by using the standard deviation of at least three measurements. So over here on the right, there's a, there's a diagram of sample standard deviation for metabolic rate in male and female fulmars. So here we have multiple measurements, one, two, three, four, five measurements. Here we have a bunch more measurements. Um, and the red dot indicates the average of all of those measurements. These arrows here represent the standard deviation. So the standard deviation really tells you about the spread in the data points. Are they very far apart from each other or are they very close to each other? You can see that the standard deviation for females is much smaller because those data, those data points are closer together. The spread of those data points is not as wide or as broad as it is for males. So here this has uh, data points that are much further apart and so our standard deviation is just about twice that for females. So what this looks like um, in a different way is if you had an infinite number of measurements, then you'd get a bunch of measurements close to the average and then they would trail off. You get fewer and fewer measurements as you got further away from that average. And it would look something like this plot here. 
So here's a bunch of data points down here in blue. Okay, the red dot again is indicating the average and you should have the most number of measurements at that average. You'll have a lot of measurements here right around the average, but then the number of measurements at higher than the average or lower than the average is going to decrease as you get further away. Now this distribution is a is a Gaussian curve, okay, and if only um, random error is involved, then all of your data points should fall along this curve. Um, if we look at what that curve look, looks like in terms of uh, standard deviation, one standard devi the average plus or minus one standard deviation should contain about 68% of all the data points. So again, if you had an infinite number of measurements, 68% of your measurements should fall in, within plus or minus one standard deviation of the average. Um, within plus or minus two standard deviations, you get 95% of all your data. So again, you're just sort of looking at this pink area and integrating under that curve. How many of those data points would fall within two uh, standard deviations, it would be 95% of data. And then within 3% of three standard deviations, you get 99.7% of all data will fall between um, the average plus or minus three standard deviations. So the width of this curve, right, the width of this standard deviation tells you about the width of the curve overall, and that tells you about the spread in the data points. So if you have more spread in your data points, then you are less reliable, right, or less repeatable in your measurements. And if you have a large spread, uh, right, if you have a large spread in your data, you are less repeatable, less reliable, um, and a larger standard deviation. If you are very repeatable, then you're going to have a lot more measurements um, that are closer to this average. This distribution will become more narrow and your standard deviation will get smaller. Okay, so standard deviation is a great way to, ca to characterize the reliability or the precision of your measurements. Accuracy, however, is about um, describing how close your measured value is to the true value or the accepted value. Um, the accuracy describes the validity of the measurement. Is this a valid measurement? Um, can you compare it to um, a literature value and is it close? Now typically in general chemistry lab at this level we're characterizing by, by using a percent difference. All this does is really tell you about how far away your measured average is from the true value, okay? Um, so here I have that same watch data where we're now going to be comparing the percent difference of Jerry's watch to um, this Bureau of Standards time. And you can see that Jerry's watch, even though it is less precise, is much more accurate than Jennifer's digital watch. There's less difference between Jerry's watch and the Bureau's uh, time than there is between Jennifer's watch and the Bureau's time. So this is how, this is a, a straightforward way to measure the accuracy. Um, but if you want to consider your distribution of, of data points, then a much better way to determine the accuracy of your, of your measured data is to use a confidence interval. So a confidence interval, uh, this looks like a big equation, but it's not that it's not that complicated. If we go back to that distribution of data points that's down here, right? And we say this is approximately plus or minus two standard deviations here for a 95% confidence interval. So you, the question is, can I compare the true value, which is a red dot here, to the data that I've taken? If that true value falls within the confidence interval for my data, then we would say, yes, this is statistically the same uh, the same number. The true value falls within my measured range, and therefore I can say they are the same. Um, if the true value falls outside the measured range, like it does here, um, then I can say that they are statistically different. Okay, so since 95% of my measurement values should fall within plus or minus two standard deviations here, then that means if my true value is outside my confidence interval, then I am 95% confident um, that the true value and my measured value are two different things. If, however, my the true value falls within my confidence interval, 
then I can say that to 95%, they are the same, uh, statistically the same value. Um, to calculate the confidence interval, again, we have a lower limit and an upper limit. So that's really all this equation is saying. The upper limit is the average value plus this t value times standard deviation divided by the square root of the number of measurements. The lower limit is the average value minus that same thing, the t value times the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Um, n is um, the number of measurements that you're making and the degrees of freedom over here is the number of measurements minus one. So if you're gonna calculate this, you need to use a T value. Um, and if you've taken a statistics class, um, then what that T value means is a little more um, uh, clear probably. Um, but this, this is a statistic value, okay, that you're gonna get from a table. It depends on how confident you wanna be. So plus or minus two standard deviations is approximately 95% um, probable. Uh, probability level, but you could do one standard deviation and that would put you in here and that would be a 68% confidence interval. Okay, so we don't have that data here, but if you want to choose what T you need to use, you're going to go to not in this uh, lab, you'll be using 95% confidence interval. So you're just going to pick out that column and then you're going to go across by the number of measurements that you've made subtract one, find the degrees of freedom. So if you only take three measurements, okay, then you have two degrees of freedom and you would use 4.3 as the value of T in this equation.